When you got a jerk bait tied on, the best place to look this time of year, early spring, main lake points. You're gonna run around with your electronics. You're gonna find big boulders, long extensive flats leading into shallower pockets. And that's a great place to start, especially in the water temperatures or you know, low to mid 50s. You know, those fish probably aren't spawning quite yet. And they're probably either pulled out if they were gonna try to spawn or they're on their way in from their wintering habitat. And I'm looking around, just trying to find those bigger boulders on those points mixed with sand as well. That sand will warm up nice and quickly. Those big boulders are cover for those big smallmouth and you can really get into them in a hurry running main lake points this time of year. There's one. Good. Right on the pause. Water's 50 degrees. Is that a Walter? Gravel lizards? What the heck, we're bass fishing. Local specials get bit all sorts of species. Big walleyes, big smallmouth, absolutely. T-boned it too, look at that. Middle hook, right color, right bait, right depths. We're out here throwing this local special around, looking for smallmouth, bycatch, big old Walter. Nothing wrong with that. He's gone. Well, one thing too I like to do when I'm working the jerk bait. You get a little bit more range of motion when you're pulling the rod from this side of your body rather than straight down to the boat. You're gonna run out of room. So if you're pulling it to the side, you feel a fish grab it and you need to keep it at a strike zone but keep it moving a little bit more, you got way more space. I mean, you can come all the way around your body if you have to, you know what I mean? Also, if one slack lines it, you got that whole body motion to get a good hook set in them, then you can catch up to them. And one thing I like to do too is throw it on an eight to one I can physically slow down if I have to, but if one cracks it like that and he takes off and I gotta get slack out of the rod, I can do it. A good fish here. The walleye bite is hot. Did anybody know that there was giant walleyes in Minnesota? Who would have known? Joker, you. Look at the size of this one. Just a freak. Big old specimen. You don't always need live bait to catch big walleyes. Throw a jerk bait in the springtime and you're gonna get bit. One thing nice about throwing a deeper diving jerk bait like we're throwing here today, you can fish it in three foot of water when those fish are moving shallow. So if you see a nice little rock flat or something real up shallow, you can still throw it in there. And with this build design, it's kind of got a coffin build to it. So it'll deflect and bounce off of rocks, wood really, really well. And honestly, when you're using a jerk bait and wanting to hit the bottom, the bigger build's better. It's gonna help deflect a lot easier. You're not gonna get hung up as much. Think about it this way, that bait's pointed down so it's easier to hop up and roll over rather than a shallower run and jerk bait. That bait's gonna wanna sit like this in the water column and you're gonna hit the rocks, the wood with those hooks. So I always like going a little bit deeper, helps keep bottom contact. And like I said, the way that's designed with that coffin bill helps really bounce off cover really well. Got one right there, boys and girls. That's another walleye. I think we snagged ourselves a giant Walter. No, we didn't. I think we, we broke the code. We, we did it. Big old small moth. Inhaled the jerk bait. Absolutely crushed it. Make sure he's not green coming in the boat. Look at that, that's... That's how you know you got the right color. They're eating it good. Way he goes. Free at last. We're fishing right now. We got a main lake point leading into some shallower shorelines. You got big rock veins coming off the main lake and those fish, they'll come right up on top of them. They'll follow that vein all the way up into the shallows. But when I'm throwing a jerk bait, 
I, especially this time of year, I love it when it's hitting the bottom, bouncing off of rocks. And you can keep that bait right on the bottom, especially when the water's cold. You got a high pressure system coming in, those fish are right on the bottom. They're feeding up on perch, they're bottom dwelling fish as well for the most part. And so you keep that bait on the bottom, you're gonna get bit. A lot of guys, you know, love throwing suspending jerk baits, and I do too. I love throwing jerk baits when it's summer months, fall months, when those fish are feeding up. But this time of year, catching big smallmouth, water's cold, that bait on the bottom seems to get bit a lot more. Here we go. That'd be a good one. Right species, right bait. <sighs> Local special, getting it done. We were fishing shallower, about six foot of water or so, and moved off a little bit deeper, and there you go. They're sitting deeper today. At cooler water, we've got some fronts coming in, and. I think that's the ticket right there. When picking the right jerk bait, one with a weight transfer system in it is key. The biggest reason for that, you're throwing a jerk bait usually in the wind like we are today on a main point, coming into some pockets and being able to cast that thing into the wind, especially nowadays with spot lock, that's key. So weight transfer systems, make that bait cast with ease into the wind. For some reason, you know, you get disturbance in the water. Those bait fish get all stirred up and those smallmouth love to eat when that wind is blowing hard. That's big when it comes to throwing jerk baits in the wind. Weight transfer systems, better castability, you're gonna catch more fish, especially on the windy days. And the biggest deal to make sure your bait's in the right depth is when you throw it out there, reel it down with your rod tip in the water really fast, you know, four or five different turns on the handle and now that bait is right in the strike zone. You know, a jerk bait it kind of implies what you do with it. You're going to jerk it, you're going to twitch it, you're going to pop it. And what I love in a good jerk bait rod is it's got to have a nice soft tip to it, but enough backbone so it doesn't seem like it's underpowered or it's super whippy. You don't want a whippy rod for one reason. When you're jerking that rod to get that really darting subtle or darting left to right action without being subtle with it, you need that nice good backbone, soft tip. I'm throwing a 610 medium Envy Black today. It sounds a little bit ridiculous, but it's definitely a workout, especially in the wind. But one thing I like about in a good jerk bait rod is it's gotta be comfortable. That is key. Comfortable and light. 610 medium, 68 medium, somewhere in that range is my preference. It's not too soft where I feel like I'm gonna hit myself in the back of the head when I cast it, but it's definitely not too stiff where I can't get a good load in the rod. So that's one key in a jerk bait rod is being able to let that bait load up. And then more importantly, you're gonna be fishing this bait with your rod. So that jerk, jerk, pause motion, that soft tip and that backbone, you get a real crisp pop snap to it. And that's gonna help that jerk bait work left to right, up, down, that really erratic motion that triggers big small malt to eat. There's one. Right kind. They are coming all the way up out of 12 foot of water to crack this thing. Piece of one. T-bone the jerk bait. Boom. People sometimes want to know, am I throwing the right color? If they're eating like that, you're throwing the right color. Middle hook, that's the key. Not a giant, but a good one. And he cracked it. Bye bye, Mr. Smallmouth. You hear guys say it all the time, but jerk bait fishing is all about the cadence. It's a jerk, jerk, pause motion. Sometimes it's a jerk, jerk, pull motion. You kind of got to read the fish and how they're acting at that moment, that body of water, that, that water temperature. But when you snap that rod left to right, it's doing exactly that. It's left, right, super erratic. It's pointed nose down, and then you can kill it. When you kill it, bait's going to sit like this, nose down, and just slowly creep up. 
Now, depending upon what kind of line, we're running 10 pounds straight fluorocarbon a day, but that's gonna have a little bit to do with the, with the action and the cadence. We fish in Southern Florida, and we'll be taking a three to five footer, believe it or not, and putting on a 50 pound braid and throwing it over tops of grass. Still catches fish. So you just kinda kinda figure out what the fish want, the body of water you're fishing, change it up, and you're gonna catch them. There's one right there, eat it. Got him, big old walleye, right to the boat. No way is that even real. Watched him come right off the sand. Boom, right under the boat. Watched him come up and eat it like a big smallmouth. God, these walleyes are aggressive. They've been hiding under the ice all year. Saw that jerk bait and they said, I want me one of them. I want me one of them. It's like hand feeding him. Look at that. Away he goes. And it's another giant walleye. Absolute freak. Out today just looking for smallmouth, but every time you catch one of those, it's not a bad day. It's one thing about throwing jerk baits in the springtime, you're gonna catch everything. Looking for big old brown fish today. We've had a few of them, but nothing wrong. Just catching a walleye in the meantime. Take a look at that thing. Put him back. There he goes. He wanted to go faster than I wanted to let him. 